Hi, my name is uh, Paul Groves and I am the father of Alexander and Adam Groves. So, Paul, if you don't mind just speaking uh, about Alex and Adam's junior careers, um, how was that in terms of did they compete nationally, any international tournaments? Uh, What did that look like? Uh, Okay, so um, they both represented the county um, up to um, adult level um, through every age uh, age group, um, doing county cup and doing the the local um, 10, I think they used to call it 10 or 12 counties tournaments. Yeah, um, 12 counties, yeah. Normally around around Corby. Um, They both started off really down the same route where they they sort of got into the grade threes, which were quite localised and then branched out into the grade twos, the nationals, um, really from orange ball to green ball, all the way up to um, um, uh, yellow ball and and getting to the grade ones as well. Um, so it was it was really a natural progression. Um, on the international front, they've both done a few tennis Europe's. Um, we weren't heavily involved at the time in the, in the international stuff. Um, they both represented the school as well. The school that we're at was Newhall in Essex, uh, Chelmsford in Essex. They'd done a World Schools Games in Morocco. Um, both represented the school there. I think they were they were under the Great Britain banner, um, but Newhall was a school that got chosen for that one. Um, so that was a really good experience for them as well. But I, I think you know they they went the usual route. They they were sort of um, I think the, the terminology was talent ID'd. Back in the day, yeah, um, went went through the the national process of you know getting the badge and getting the sweatshirt and, yeah. and going to going to Roehampton for the talent ID days and, and both done quite a few camps at Roehampton as well and probably up until the age of thirteen or fourteen. And at what stage did you know US college come into the picture? In terms of have you had you spoken about it before? Was you know was it discussions with other players or parents for, on, on your side? Um, what was that like in terms of making that decision? Yeah, I think um, the exposure really come. There's been a few guys that have gone from Essex that have gone out to um, America. Um, I mean, Ryan Pennison was one of them um, that went out to Memphis. Um, so he was he was sort of on the horizon of the younger lads that yeah. sort of looked up to him. Um, I think that opened the eyes. Um, I think both both of the lads were pretty successful uh, in the early years, and then sort of probably levelled off in the thirteen to fourteen, maybe even fifteen age group, and then come back strong again. Yeah. Um, so I think in that in that time where maybe you have a bit of a natural progression and they level off a bit, you you start realising that tennis is an incredibly hard sport, yeah. um, spe- especially to make a living at. So, you know, what other routes can you take um, or can they take to use tennis as a, as a tool to sort of expand their horizons and expand their life experiences? And, and America, you know, it's, it's obviously always been very popular with tennis players. Yeah. But there seemed to be a, a sort of an increase in, um, I would say, um, people looking at America, uh, you know, viewing it as, as a place to go. And then we started to see the likes of Pippa at the Nationals in Nottingham, um, uh, I think at Roehampton as well. So yeah. you started having those conversations and and then the sort of like the realisation here that this is a pretty good route to take. Mm-hmm. And so is that where you kind of came into contact with Pippa and Stars and Stripes was when she was at the NTC at those camps? Was that the first time you kind yeah, of... I, I'm trying to remember. I think I think Pippa, we'd, we'd sort of had a very very brief chat with her. Um, I think it was one of the national tournaments. It may, it could well have been Nottingham. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she'd done her roadshow around the schools. Uh, ah, so okay, yeah. Attended. Um, and she came down the new hall, and, that, and that's when the conversation sort of really struck up. And Alex probably at the time was around fifteen or sixteen. I yeah. Think. So you know that it, it, the, the timing was great. The yeah. Timing was perfect. And what were the priorities for, you know, not just you as a parent, but for the boys in terms of when they were looking at colleges? What did, you know, how did that work with what they wanted and, you know, maybe what Pippa advised, um, you know, just getting started? Because I know it's quite overwhelming when you look at just the amount of colleges that there are in the States. Um, I mean, I, for one, didn't know anything about 
you know, conferences or, you know, state school, private school. I didn't know really what was going on. So how did that look for the guys? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very steep learning curve, very steep learning curve. And as obviously when you're talking to Pippa, you, you're sort of, you're, you're breaking into a network. Um, yeah. Her knowledge of, of the colleges, her knowledge, just as important the colleges, her knowledge of the coaches as well. Um, so, yeah, it, I, I think it's probably the sort of thing that you can, when you initially look at it, you think, oh, you could probably do this yourself. And then you walk into this complete minefield. Um, so the guidance is, is imperative, really. I mean, for the boys, I mean, I, I, I'm a massive advocate. But when it actually comes to choosing the colleges, I think, you know, you, you've got to get your kid to do a lot of the homework. Yeah. You know, you're going to do a lot of the per- peripheral stuff around it. But at the end of the day, they're going to be the ones that are yeah. probably going to stay there four years. Yeah. So, you know, they were looking at uh, Alex was an incredibly sporty kid in terms of tennis, golf, football, um, you know, he, he went to NAU, one of the choices, uh, his main choice was NAU purely because of the like incredible facilities they have there. The fact that it's a high altitude place, they, they have a lot of professional uh, sportsmen training there. So yeah. he was very, he was angled at the, the sort of like athletic side, but also very, very mindful of the education side. Um, Adam, it's probably fair to say he's, he's quite academic. Um, so he's gone to St John's in New York, yeah. um, which is a, a very good academic college, but with a very good tennis team as well. So you know he, he probably leaned more on his acad- academia really to get to get him there, um, but but he's also on the tennis team as well. So they they both done a lot of homework. Um, yeah. Pippa gave them a, a cross section that she introduced them to. Um, she was also quite open if there was one that they wanted her to approach. Um, she done that for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, they spent a lot of hours on their laptops, um, looking at various different aspects of college, not just colleges, but college life as well. Mm-hmm. You know, the oh, that's just as important. Satisfaction, yeah. yeah, student enjoyment, looking at the towns, seeing where the towns ranked in places to live in America, um, and really building up a good picture. Yeah. So, so it saved me a lot of time. No, I mean, I think that's important. I think that you know ultimately it's you that are going to spend the four four years there um of your life so i mean of course it's pippa is such a that like viable tool to use in terms of as you said like just the network of people that she she knows already um but yeah, yeah i agree i do think that it is ultimately down to you to you know do your homework as you said and research like okay is this going to be a good fit for me um so more on Pippa did how much time did she spend you know getting to know the boys and watch them compete um before they went so we we had the initial meeting uh, yeah I think for, I think for Alex we had it at Roehampton because yeah. it was there during a tournament <clears throat> I think for Adam because we were in the, the the height of Covid at the time yeah um that was done online um and then you know she there was there was contact with me but there was a lot of contact with the boys so basically you know their commitment was to let her know where they were playing yeah um and you know she was she was turning up at a good few tournaments naturally she was you know i'm I'm not saying she just traveled the the length of the country to see my boys she was going to tournaments where there was a decent amount of of kids that she was interacting with and working for yeah um and she's building up a picture of their capabilities she was very interested in their um, their results, um, yeah. and she she actually normally texted them, you know, well done or a bad luck before yeah. they would even contacted her. So she she was on top of them, um, and then to a certain extent, there was advice on what tournaments to to take. I mean, I I, I think luckily my two were quite worldly wise on nine suitable tournaments, yeah, um, as part of their their progress. But there, there was that. Um, advice if needed um to say you know that that tournament will probably present you in a better light than maybe that tournament yeah um looking looking at the field and you know looking at the the level and the competition yeah so yeah i mean there, there was a, a lot of interaction and, and I, literally i i don't know half of it because a lot of it went on directly with with the lads and yeah. you know lucky we've got whatsapp now because that was that was printing most nights yeah for sure and once the guys, you know, committed and went to university, um, 
we can speak about you know their experiences in a little bit but with Pippa you know was that communication kind of ongoing even once they'd left just you know kind of checking in and seeing how they're doing how they're settling in yeah, very much so. I mean, even to the point where Alex, um, Alex has done his four years and he, he decided not to take the fifth year. Yeah. Um, so he graduated back in May and, um, you know, she was after details about his graduation and, and was the college supporting him in, in terms of finding employment in the US and, and you know, in, down to that level, um, which luckily they were. Um, but yeah, I mean, she, I mean, whatever interaction I've had with her since they've gone, you know, the conversation normally starts, oh, I spoke to Adam last week or I spoke to Alex a couple of weeks ago. So I think, you know, when you when you sort of, you buy into the service, it's not for the, it's not for the process of getting them there. You know, yeah. it is a, a long-term service. And, oh, yeah, for sure. She's there should you need to lean on her. Um, yeah. And always at the end of a WhatsApp chat or a phone call, which I think, you know, they... And there could well have been conversations going on that I don't know about where yeah. you know, maybe things weren't going right and um, probably we don't want to know about. Um, but, you know, it, it's good to have a sort of a third party to be involved. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, Pippa said to me that she even met up with Alex at a match in Portland in his first year. Yeah. And she said that yeah. she's going to try and meet Adam in New York at some point because I know she tries to go out there and watch, uh, I think it's the NCA's individuals, but she tries to, you know, when she's out there, see as many of her players as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, um, I think she was lucky to catch Alex because soon after he had to come home because of COVID. Oh, yeah. Um, so, that, so that was good timing. Um, yeah. I'm sure that was about the time. Um, yeah, she was over in Portland. I think she might have been taking someone over there on a, a visit, actually. Oh, okay. um, and he was playing. He was playing at the Portland um, conference, I think it was. Yeah. So about the guys' um, experience, and obviously you're speaking as a parent here. How was it in terms of obviously they both went to very, as you said, you know, maybe different schools in terms of what they wanted. How was, uh, you know, Adam's experience? Well, he's still there right now, but with, uh, you know, St. John's and how has he found that? And then how did Alex find, uh, you know, Arizona? Was it a positive experience? Did he, you know, love it? I, you mentioned that he's got employment in the US afterwards. So I'm guessing he did like it enough to stay. Um, how has that whole thing been? Um, so Alex first, um, absolutely loved it. Um, you know, it's hard to find stuff not to love about the place. Yeah. Um, he, he was up in Flagstaff at NAU, Northern Arizona University. Um, you know, you are, you're probably 30 minutes from a golf course and 15 minutes from a ski slope yeah. all on the same day. Naturally, he didn't go skiing. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's very diverse up there. I think it was rated in the top five places to live in the US. Yeah. Um, you've got the big city of Phoenix two hours away down the mountain. Um, they've really leaned on the, the fact that they're at 7,000 feet, so they've turned it into a high altitude training centre. Um, so there was only, I think it was only Air Force that was at the same level as in, in Colorado. So I think they had a, a distinct advantage for the poor, the poor kids that were coming up from sea level yeah. to play them. Um, so yeah, I mean it was a, it was a fantastic campus. Facilities were out of this world and just been extended um, this year as well. But another another big centre has been built there for all the athletes. Um, really look after the athletes. Good cross section of, of people. Um, yeah. Team was quite multi quite multinational, but with a with a good uh, US core base, which I think yeah. is quite important. Um, so that worked out really well. Adam the same. Yeah. Um, you know, Adam's in New York, he's in Queens, so New York tracks are quite diverse. You know, yeah. most most people probably think of New York as the first port of call going to the States. Yeah. So he's the same um, diverse team. Um, he played it slightly different because he went into the house the first year uh, okay. where, uh, where Alex went in halls. Um, yeah. it, it suited, there was a space in the house, um, the school let him go in um, as because he was a tennis scholar. Um, yeah. Absolutely loves it. Um, he he sort of completely different scenario. Goes into Manhattan probably every two or three weeks. Um, in the winter they train at Flushing Meadows at the uh, Billy Jean Center, Billy Jean King Center. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean when you look at the, the two places that they're at, they're sort of 
incredibly different in most aspects, yeah. but also very similar. Yeah, in a lot of aspects as it's, well. It's funny because it's actually really similar to me and my sister, my younger sister. She's four years younger, and yeah. she's just outside of New York in Fairfield in Connecticut. And she oh, also yeah, yeah. goes to Manhattan every two or three yeah. weeks. And then yeah. I was in Virginia at a very, like, facilities were great. It was very more athletics. Uh, and Scarlett's, yeah. my sister's, is more academic. So it's just interesting to see that it's it's very similar. Um, yeah. yeah. And would you say in terms of support from the universities themselves, I found, you know, support with academics and physio and all of that, you kind of have a setup of like a mini team, if you will. Uh, did the guys say that as well when they went over there? Just the support level from yeah. the universities? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, as a parent, I, 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 I found it slightly amusing that you sort of spend a year proving that they're amateur and then you send them into the most professional environment that they've ever seen. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the support teams are fantastic in both colleges. You, you've got the various different coaches you've got the, the sports psychology sites you yeah. know you've got the food and nutrition yeah. um, physios um, academic all, all advisors yeah. yeah and then the academic advisors are a very very important conduit between sort of like taking them out of tennis and really you could probably argue putting them into what they're really there for yeah um and and you know i think you need that, that those academic advisors who work on behalf of the uh, sports scholars you know they they can act as that link between telling the professor that you're not going to be around for two or three days and you promise to do your work um, yeah. and that the, the importance of the academic advisors you know they act as a very good link between your sporting life and your and your academic yeah. life you know they yeah. they fully understand the the, the sort of uh, the, the balance that you have to you have to um the, the, the time juggling really um, you know playing sport going away for days on end um, and then hit, hitting deadlines and your homework and your, your coursework um, yeah. I, I definitely think they can they help smooth out certain situations maybe between professors and, and teams um, to make sure there's a good balance between both sides of it um, yeah. but the I think the, the whole support network that they've, they've both had from the coaches downwards has been fantastic yeah and last couple of questions here. What advice would you give to parents that are going through the same, you know, process uh, with Pippa and, you know, looking to send their kids to American University? What would you say? I'd say you have to absolutely keep on top of the administration side. There, there is a lot of administration to do. Um, I think to a certain extent it was slightly easier with, with Adam um, because number one, I'd done it once. Yeah. And number two, due to COVID, that sort of relaxed some of the rules in respect like you didn't have to go up to the US Embassy anymore. You could do a, effectively an online yeah. uh, visa application. So there's certain certain aspects of that. Um, as I say, the, I think the, the child has got to take a vested interest and do a lot of homework themselves. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're there. You're there for the support. You know, you're there to you know sign sign on the dotted line and get the paperwork together. Yeah. But really, it's 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 the kids' decision. You know, they're they're the ones going to be talking to the coaches. They they need to find out about the team. They need to find about who's who's leaving, who's staying. Um, you know, they 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 need to work out where they're potentially going to be on the team you know if, if they're not going to necessarily play the first year um and they have to ask the questions quite subtly yeah um and, and, and sort of like get it out of the coach um i th i think if you can i think you need to go over there and look as well yeah i think you need to go and visit visit the colleges and you know do a bit of homework first you know make sure that the college you're going to go and visit is one that you falls in your your budget um, because it's great looking at all these places, but at the end of the day, if, if the offer's not going to be what's acceptable to you, you're, you're sort of wasting your time and their time, really. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's homework, it's, it's fact-finding, and it's, it's learning how to deal with a lot of administration that seems to be very, very repetitive. Yeah, um, it's worth if, it. If you get it wrong, yeah, yeah, if you get it wrong, it's, it's a pitfall. Yeah. Well, you kind of already covered my second question, my last question, which was oh, really? uh, the Sorry. advice of the players. No, you were thorough. That was great. So thank you so much, Paul, for speaking with me today. 
thanks a lot for each other. <laughs>